Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. This week we're coming to you from the City Worship Studio in Jacksonville, Florida. And I uh, just want to show you guys something interesting that we were working on this past week. Um, we're reopening the studio coming out of COVID. And um, we had a vocal session this past week. I wanted to try some new stuff. So I just wanted to kind of show you what we were working with. Um, basically, this week we're trying two things. One, um, we are using a Behringer XR18 as an interface. And I just wanted to talk about the pros and cons of using a digital mixer as an audio interface. Um, and then two, we're trying out Studio One as our DAW. I usually use Logic, I love Logic, been using it for years, um, but I'm, I'm keen to try different things and so we're trying out Studio One. Um, so we're gonna hop right into it. Again, we're gonna talk about some pros and cons of using the XR18 or something similar. And then we'll also talk about how we interface that with Studio One. Hey, 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 what do you say? Yes, it's that time again. It's Tech Tuesday. Hopping straight in, um, let's start by talking about the cons. The first one that I wanted to mention is that there is a severe lack of uh, analog control. Uh, and that's the whole purpose of the XR18 is that there's, it's supposed to be controlled by a tablet. Um, but that can be a issue in the studios from time to time. So the only analog control on here is this phone's output, uh, which at least there's that, but the rest of the time you're either gonna need to use um, the app on your computer or you can have a tablet. Now, it's not a huge deal. In fact, I actually kinda like having the tablet because I can go in the other room and before the client arrives, I can set basic gains and stuff um, using the tablet. Uh, the biggest deal is just not having a master volume control that you can grab in case of emergencies. Um, again, not a huge deal. We use the, uh, the master left right on here, um, which we currently have set at negative 20. And that works just fine for me. If I wanted to, I could also add like a Mackie big knob or something like that to give me a volume control between my mixer and the speakers. Um, but again, it's just kind of weird, you know, not having <laughs> A knob that you can grab, but uh, it's really not that big of a deal. All right, the next con I want to talk about is the size of the mixer. Um, most audio interfaces that are eight channels or less are going to be a single rack unit. You'll notice this guy is actually three rack units deep. Um, so it really just depends on what you're comparing it to. If you're comparing it to uh, the smaller guys, it's three times bigger. Now for us, we usually use an Apogee uh, Symphony, and then we have another interface that is giving us another eight inputs so we can get to 16 inputs. So we end up using three spaces either way. Um, and at least with this, it's one unit with three spaces instead. So again, it just depends on what you're comparing it to, um, but it is bigger than most interfaces. Three, um, the IO location. What I mean by that is if you look at it, all the connections with the exception of um, the power connection are all on the front. Uh, most interfaces, you'll have like two inputs on the front, a headphone jack, and the rest of it's all on the rear. Now, the nice thing about that is it usually looks cleaner in your studio, whereas on here you could have, if everything's plugged in, 32 cables coming out of the front of your interface, which it's just kind of ugly. I mean, you don't really need to get to anything but the uh, the headphone mix, so it's not a huge deal, but it's just not very attractive. All right, now let's talk about pros. First off, affordability. Uh, now this again depends on what you're comparing this to, um, but right now something like the Behringer XR18 uh, is $700. Similar units from other brands are gonna be between 700 and 1,000, depending on what you're looking at. Considering that this is both an 18 channel interface and it can act as a full live mixer for 18 channels, you do get a lot for your money. Uh, a good comparison would be a lot of eight channel interfaces start at $500. Um, so when you consider all that, you get a lot for your money. Another pro is that the uh, preamps are digitally controlled. So if we look on here on channel one, 
Got input selected. You can see that my analog gain is set to 28 dB. Now by this being digitally controlled, I can just make a note in my DAW. So here we are looking at Studio One uh, and you can see on this take two channel here, I've actually used the note section and wrote gain 28. So I could work in this session, three weeks go by, I'm working on other sessions, I'm working on live stuff, whatever it is I'm doing. That individual wants to come back into the studio, cool. I can set up the microphone, I can go back in here and set this to 28 dB, and boom, we were right back at the same settings that we had last time we were in the studio. Another pro would be the amount of DSP in here. Now, this isn't gonna really affect your mixing, but if you want to do uh, zero latency monitoring for a whole bunch of musicians at once, and maybe you wanted to use the effects engines in the XR18, the compression, EQ, and gating, all that stuff, you have it available. Uh, so you can do that, whereas most other interfaces have some basic variations of that, but they, uh, it's usually just volume control, maybe one reverb or two, uh, and the engineer in the studio has to be the one to control that. Now the cool thing about using something like an XR18 or any other kind of rack mount mixer is that you can give app control to the individuals in the tracking room. So I could have a six piece band in there they could be mixing their own ears on the XR18's DSP while I'm in the studio just recording it and doing my own thing. And um, I don't have to be involved in their headphone mixes unless they need me to adjust an EQ or something. Uh, and so that's really cool and that could make things a lot easier um, for jam sessions or songwriting sessions that you might be working on. Okay, now let's just kind of look at how we're interfacing these two guys together. Um, and then we'll look at some things in Studio One before we finish up this video. So first off, inputs, like I said, the XR18 has uh, 18 inputs, 16 of those are preamps, and then we've got, you know, 17, 18 are uh, line inputs. Um, the way we're getting that to Studio One is if we go to our in and out button on here, and then USB sends. So we're sending signal through the USB from the XR into uh, Studio One. And so you can see it's a one-to-one -one patch all the way down. So channel nine is being sent out USB nine. And then in Studio One, if you click on IO, We've got another grid page in here, and again, we're using a one-to-one -one patch. So if I was to use input nine, I could see the input nine is receiving nine from the XR18. So I've gone ahead and made a default uh, a template to work with on here where we have uh, 18 mono inputs, and then we also have nine stereo inputs, and they're all pre-routed. In Studio One, you can make that your default if you're using this mixer all the time, or you can export these settings and import them as you need. Pretty cool, pretty easy to work with. And of course, you can rename them and do all that kind of stuff. Uh, outputs, for this particular session, we were doing an acapella, um, like Southern Gospel recording kind of thing, so we didn't need a whole lot of outputs, but we had Master and Listen Bus, these are um, what we're gonna hear are the studio monitors. Those are both coming out of USB one and two. We'll talk more about those in a second here. Uh, the way that's getting to um, the actual speakers is under the aux input, which is normally the quarter inch input on the XR, um, we have changed the source to USB return one and two. So, USB one and two from the computer. So that includes my DAW and then anything else I have open like Spotify, Netflix, whatever that's gonna be, is coming into the DAW channel. The DAW channel is set at Unity volume and then we're hitting our main left right. Uh, also, as I mentioned earlier with DSP, our main left right also has the ability to throw EQ on here. The other day I felt like I needed a little bit less sub Rather than trying to crawl behind the desk and turn the subwoofer down, uh, I just threw an EQ on here and called it for the day. So that makes things really easy. 
All right, so that's how we're getting sound out of USB one and two to our speakers. We then also have the HP out, that's headphone output. That is going out of the next set of outputs, three and four. In the Xair, if you go to ins and outs and we look at main out, you can see the mains are sending the main left right, which is our main fader that we just talked about. Phones normally would be set to mono there, but we have it set to USB three and four. So those channels from Studio One are going straight to my headphone amp on the XR. Very, very easy to work with. Uh, and then finally for this session, you notice this says one room. Um, and so that's my shorthand for knowing that this is aux one on the XR18. It's using the next output, which is USB five. So again, looking on the Xair, in the out, ins and outs page, uh, we got aux outs and you can see aux one is sending out the signal that it's receiving from USB five through 10. So if you wanted to, um, if you didn't feel like using the DSP in the Xair, you could set up a um, headphone output and then three stereo outputs for four stereo mixes all together. Or you could do those, uh, instead of three stereo, it could be another six mono or whatever in between. Um, so you could do a bunch of mixes through Studio One if your computer is uh, capable enough. Um, so that's really cool that you can do all that. All right, looking at my session here, uh, first off at the far right, we've got our master bus, um, which again is going to our main left and right, and the listen bus. So the listen bus is something that I think is unique to Studio One. It basically gives you a um, solo bus like what you would have on an actual mixer. And really cool functionality. Um, I talked about it in our broadcast video, um, but in the studio, you can do some really neat things with it as well. So if you have right click solo through listen bus enabled, I can have a client in the tracking room recording, listening to the mix that we've set up for them in studio one. And I can solo something like the verb and that will solo it in the control room where I'm listening, but it will not affect the in-ears of the person in the tracking room. Whereas in a normal situation, if I hit solo on the reverb, you would hear only reverb in the control room and you would hear reverb in um, the person's ears in the other room. Uh, so this is really cool that you can do that in here and not affect what's going on uh, anywhere else. Another really cool feature, uh, something that I've talked about in my Logic template, is the way you can handle click tracks in Studio One is super simple. So I normally have a talkback channel and a click channel on every template that I work with. Well, I still need the talkback channel, but I don't have to have a click channel because the way Studio One operates is all of your different uh, outputs have a little triangle here that's a metronome and you can turn on or off the ability to send the click to those outputs. Um, so for example, a lot of times I don't wanna hear the click unless I'm checking someone's timing in the control room Well, I can just turn off on the listen bus and the master bus um, the metronome, but I can still be sending it to the headphone out. Uh, in, in this particular session, we had a headphone mix sometimes. We also had a uh, speaker in the room for our room mix, and that was like an intercom system where I could just talk to them. Well, I don't want a metronome going through that, so I can simply turn it off. And then to adjust the levels going to, in this case, the headphone mix, this little button right next to it is just a fader that just turns up and down um, the metronome only to that mix. Uh, because I've got a listen bus set up, if I were to solo the headphone out, it is now being heard through my speakers as well, so I can hear exactly how much click I'm sending them and make sure that they're happy. So that is really, really cool. It saves me one more channel strip. Uh, the only thing I don't really have is the ability to EQ the click, um, but I don't do that a whole lot, and uh, I, I'm pretty happy with the way the click sounds in here to begin with. Finally, one last thing I want to show you guys today that I thought was pretty sweet with Studio One. Um, 
I am working on this on a laptop screen, or at least I need to be able to go back and forth between a laptop screen. And so I'm trying to really utilize my space as best as I can. And, um, and one thing that they did that's really smart, I can have a really big mixer window like this, which is cool and useful. Um, but if I am working on this on my laptop, if I want to have the ability to easily see the arrange window and the mixer window and not have to be scrolling up and down to get to things, um, you can collapse the mixer window down and it shows you just the information that you most readily need. So we got our fader, mute, solo, record, pan, all that kind of stuff. Um, but when I need to get to the things that we would see at the top, so the inserts and the sends, well, I can instead just click on this little expand box and then as I move channels around, there we go, um, it will expand out the information just for that selected channel. Um, so you can see on here, here's my talk back. I've got my studio rack insert, and then here's my levels for the headphone output and also for the, um, the room speaker. Um, and so that's awesome because I usually don't need to see that on a bunch of channels at once. If I do, all you have to do is expand this back out. I can see them all at once, and then I can close back down. And that's great to give me enough room to see what I need um, on my mixer window, and I can still see some arrange window at the same time. I'm really happy with that. So I hope this video has been helpful for somebody. I know it's kind of random, um, but definitely if you're thinking about getting a new interface and you want something that can be used both in the live world and the studio world and sometimes in between, um, something like the Behringer XR18 might be a cool option for you. If you're looking at different DAWs, um, I haven't fully switched from Logic to Studio One yet, but I am considering it more and more. I am very impressed with, uh, with my first run through in the studio, and I plan to try it out some more. So hopefully this is helpful for someone out there. If you have any questions or comments uh, or suggestions for future videos, please feel free to leave those in our YouTube comment section below. And until next time, have a great week. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.